Hello, my name is Sue Godsell and in this presentation I'm going to look at the evidence for pain in decapod crustaceans and the implications for their welfare, particularly focusing on decapods used for human consumption. I will look at the types and numbers of crustaceans used for food, briefly examine the structure of the nervous system in decapods and look at the difference between nociception and pain. I will then review some of the recent evidence for pain in decapods and in the light of that evidence look at some of the practices that are used in farming, capture, transport and slaughter. In conclusion, I will look at how we can improve welfare for decapods used in the food industry. Most of the crustaceans eaten by humans are decapods. These include lobsters, crabs, crayfish, prawns and shrimps. Figures from the Food and Agriculture Organization's Fisheries Global Information System show that over 13 billion tonnes of decapods were produced worldwide in 2016, mostly in Asia with the majority coming from China. The UK is a small player in this industry, producing 7,000 tonnes in the same year. We have estimates of the numbers of farm decapods killed each year. Fishcount.org estimate that 220 to 520 billion were slaughtered worldwide in 2015. It's very difficult to estimate numbers for crustaceans caught worldwide in open waters, but the number is believed to be in the hundreds of billions. One estimate for 2008 was over 1600 billion, and this exceeds the number of chickens, sheep and cattle killed every year. These two diagrams of the nervous systems of the lobster and the crab show the ventral nerve cord linking a series of nerve ganglia. You can see that although they both have a larger dorsal ganglia, the nervous system is much more distributed throughout the body than in vertebrates, particularly in the lobster, and this has implications during slaughter as we shall see later. The nervous system of decapod crustaceans is very different from that of vertebrates, but that does not mean that it cannot produce pain as the same function can be performed by different anatomical structures in different animals. For example, crustaceans do not possess any of the visual systems found in humans, yet they have a well-developed visual ability based on an entirely different arrangement of nerves and receptors. There are two mechanisms involved in alerting an animal to tissue damage, nociception and pain. In this section, I'll take a look at the difference between the two. Nociceptors are specialised peripheral sensory neurons that pick up the presence of a harmful stimulus. Nociception is the neural process of encoding and processing noxious stimuli. In other words, it is the way that the messages from nociceptors are translated within the nervous system. This is thought to involve no unpleasant feeling and no central processing such as learning or decision making. Nociceptive ability simply enables the animal to detect tissue damage and move away from it by reflex action. There are many definitions of pain. Professor Robert Elwood of Queen's University Belfast has been at the forefront of research into the evidence for pain in crustaceans and he defines it as a centrally organised emotional interpretation of the effects of a noxious stimulus and a strong motivation to get away from or otherwise stop the effects of the noxious stimulus. While nociception provides immediate action, pain enables long-term protection by learning and awareness leading to a motivation to avoid the source of the pain. The key question is whether an animal's response to a harmful stimulus, nociception, leads to an unpleasant feeling, pain. Nociception leads to pain in many animals, but that doesn't mean that it always does. The next section reviews some of the recent research that suggests that decapod crustaceans do feel pain. Elwood has previously identified eight criteria for assessing evidence of pain in crustaceans. However, in his 2012 paper, he refined this down to four, having reached the conclusion that the first four on this list presence of nociceptors, a suitable central nervous system, decreased responses with analgesics and opioids, and high levels of cognitive ability, give limited insights into whether or not the animal is feeling pain. 
For example, many studies have shown that analgesics or opioids such as morphine reduce the responses of crustaceans to stimuli such as electric shock, showing that they're having a similar effect to that in vertebrates. However, Elwood argues that it is possible that these substances could just be interfering with nociception, so do not give a convincing result. The four criteria that he believes give us more information about the pain process are avoidance learning, physiological responses, protective motor reactions and motivational trade-offs, and I'll now look at these in more detail. Avoidance learning. Animals who experience pain are known to rapidly learn to avoid the source of the pain. McGee and Elwood showed that crabs quickly learned to avoid one of two dark shelters where they were subjected to an electric shock, as can be seen in this graph. Kawaya et al. found a similar result with crayfish who learned to avoid a light source when it was associated with a shock. If this were nociception, a reflex action with no central processing, the animal would not learn to avoid the stimulus in the longer term. Physiological responses. In the same way that we can measure corticosteroids, the stress hormones in vertebrates, we can measure the effects of CHH, crustacean hyperglycemic hormone. This hormone has the same function as corticosteroids in turning glycogen to glucose. It also causes an increase in lactate, which can be measured. Studies, including that by Patterson et al., have shown that injuries such as forcible removal of the crab claw, a practice used often in food production, are accompanied by sharp rises in glucose and lactate. Protective motor reactions. Research by Barr et al showed that brushing the antennae of prawns with acetic acid or sodium hydrochloride led to a marked increase of grooming and rubbing of the antennae against the tank wall compared with those brushed with water. The authors conclude that this behaviour is similar to that seen in vertebrates and is evidence for pain. Puri and Falks argue that the animal could just be trying to clean the noxious substance away However, Appel and Elwood have seen similar grooming and rubbing at the site of a previous electric shock in crabs, suggesting an awareness of the site at a higher level of cognition rather than just a reflex action. Motivational trade-offs. Animals who feel pain are strongly motivated to avoid it, but animals also have strong motivations to carry out other behaviours too. If pain is present, we would expect that an animal would trade off the severity of the pain against its motivation to feed, for example. Very hungry animals may tolerate more pain before they stop feeding than non-hungry ones. This type of behaviour is seen in decapods. Hermit crabs have strong shell preferences, are highly motivated to stay in a preferred type of shell and will fight others to do so. Appel and Elwood tested hermit crabs with electric shocks and found that those in preferred shells required a higher level of shock to make them evacuate the shell. Many of the treatments crustaceans are subjected to during the production of food are inhumane if we accept that they feel pain. In this section we'll take a closer look at some widespread practices which could be causing pain and suffering. Welfare issues start during farming and capture. Prawns often do not reproduce well under the crowded conditions of prawn hatcheries. Eye stalk ablation is a well-established technique in which the eye stalk is cut or cauterized, usually without anaesthetic, in order to stimulate ovary growth and reproduction, but leaving the animal without sight. Declawing is a practice in which crab claws are pulled off and the animal returned to the water unable to feed. Many of them subsequently die. Because crabs can naturally shed claws in a process called autotomy, for example when escaping a predator, it was thought by many not to cause pain. However, Patterson et al. have shown that declawing and autotomy are not the same and that declawing induces a marked stress response and increased mortality when compared with autotomy. Live crabs and lobsters are often transported for days out of water with their claws bound or mutilated. They are sent to markets, shops, restaurants and homes where they are kept in entirely unsuitable conditions. 
both lobsters and crabs can be bought mail order, for example from Amazon, and will be sent through the post. Although they can survive in a moist atmosphere for several days, this treatment may be causing stress as well as respiratory distress. In markets and shops they are often displayed in very unnatural and stressful environments. Little is known about the effect these methods of transport and storage have on crustaceans. A paper by Carder in 2017 suggests that a lot more research is needed in this area. It is when it comes to slaughter that the evidence we have seen for pain becomes most important. As many of the methods currently in use are inhumane if we accept that crustaceans feel pain. As it had previously been assumed that they do not feel pain, these are often carried out without prior stunning. As we have seen, crustaceans are often shipped live to restaurants and homes, and this means that the people carrying out the slaughter may have no prior training or experience. We are all familiar with the practice of dropping live lobsters and crabs into boiling water, where they can take up to four and a half minutes to die. Other methods include placing saltwater animals into fresh water or high salt solutions, causing death by severe osmotic shock. Live carving and dismemberment, where limbs are removed and the thorax separated from the abdomen while the animal is still alive. Carbon dioxide dissolved in water is also used. Spiking is a method used on crabs involving destroying the two main ganglia with a knife. As we saw earlier, the nervous system of the lobster is more spread out and so splitting with a knife along the central line of the body is used to try to destroy all the ganglia. This needs to be expertly done in order to destroy all the ganglia and because several nerve centres need to be destroyed, it doesn't kill the animal instantly. All of these methods have been deemed inhumane by the European Food Safety Authority if carried out without prior stunning, which is usually the case. Animals undergoing these procedures show aversive behaviour, such as trying to escape, twitching, tearing at their bodies and shedding limbs through autotomy. With many of these methods, animals are also conscious for several minutes before death. Improving welfare at slaughter Prior stunning. It has long been thought that chilling on ice or in ice slurry has a sedative effect and is a suitable pre-slaughter method. However, recent research, such as that by Roth and Erners, has found it to be ineffective in several species and may just produce paralysis rather than sedation. Acquiesce is a fish anaesthetic, which although it takes several minutes to work, appears not to cause distress in crustaceans. It is also possible to use this to kill the animal over a longer period, 20 to 25 minutes, again with little sign of distress, but further research is needed to confirm this, and it is currently only licensed in a few countries. Electrical stunning, using a device such as the cruster stun, was found to be the most humane method by Roth and Erners, rendering the animal unconscious within one second. However, the units are still quite new and are expensive, it will take some time for the food industry to adopt them voluntarily. The evidence from research by Elwood and others is compelling, and while we can never know completely what an animal is experiencing, Elwood believes that we are now in the area where you can say there is as much evidence for pain in crustaceans as there is in many vertebrates. There is at least as much evidence as there is for pain in fish, but there seems to be more acceptance for evidence of pain in fish, which some have called an example of speciesism. The capacity to feel pain has substantial adaptive value. The animal can learn to avoid danger and stay alive longer, passing its genes on to its offspring. We would expect something so important in evolutionary terms to be widespread in the animal kingdom and not just confined to vertebrates. Jonathan Birch, in his 2017 article on the precautionary principle in animal welfare, states that the appropriate burden of proof has been attained for decapod crustaceans and that they should be included in legislation. So, if we accept that decapod crustaceans do feel pain, how can we improve their welfare? Ending live transport for decapods would make a difference, as they would no longer be killed by untrained people in restaurants and homes, as would ensuring effective prior stunning before slaughter. However, this would require legislation, 
and that is severely lacking for crustaceans in many countries, including the UK, where they are not included in the 2006 Animal Welfare Act. Only Norway, Switzerland, Austria, New Zealand and some Australian states include crustaceans in their animal welfare legislation. However, there are calls for this to be changed in the UK and Europe, and campaigns such as Crustacean Compassion are gathering momentum. Making the public, retailers, producers and government aware of the growing body of research that indicates that crustaceans feel pain could lead to changes to best practice and legislation that, given the huge numbers involved, would make an enormous contribution to animal welfare. Thank you.